Just place your hand on the person on your left and your right on their shoulder. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father, we just thank you for this time tonight. Father, we come with hungry hearts. Father, you said those that are hungering thirster after thirsty after righteousness would be filled. So, Father, we're hungry tonight. We're hungry to receive. We're hungry to be changed from the inside out. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Have your way in this place tonight. And I thank you, Father, that great, great change will come in our personal lives. And great change is coming to this church. And great change is coming to this community. Because of what will be deposited into our lives. Hallelujah. Now, everyone repeat this after me. Tonight, I have an open heart to receive. I have ears to hear. I have eyes to see. And have a heart to understand. I'm open and ready. In Jesus' name. Give me a shout of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor John, come on up. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. God is good. Well, once again, it's a joy and an honor and a privilege and a pleasure to be with you here this evening. And a lot of what we do when we do pray is we practice. And uh, we practice because practice is, is really a lifestyle of learning. Uh, so I want us just to practice praising the Lord with our hands raised and just thanking Him, just praising Him for 60 seconds. I'm going to time it. Just 60 seconds. We praise You, Lord. We thank You. We thank You, Jesus. We praise your holy name this evening, Lord. We bless you. We glorify you. We honor you. We thank you that you always lead us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Thank you that we are a new creature. As a new creature, we come with authority and boldness and strength into your presence this evening, Father. And we just bless you with the fruit of our lips, and the, the, with all of what's in our heart. We praise your holy name. You are mighty. You are glorious. You are the God that is more than enough for every situation in our lives. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, only with your voices, step it up for 15 seconds. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's do 10 more seconds. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Mighty is the name of Jesus. Glorious is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And Father, you'll let your praises fill this temple. Let your glory fill this temple this evening, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Isn't that good? Isn't it good just to take all restraint off and just praise? And just praise and praise. Glory. You may be seated. I'll tell you that uh, what, what I just did with you now is really what I learned from Brother Jerry. And I learned it in the early 80s of the previous century. <laughs> and... Uh, I was, I was 
struggling to make it. I was poor. I was in debt. I had two children. Didn't know what to do next. I did have belief in God, though. I did. I had belief in God. But I heard a message from Brother Jerry. He said, Satan can't steal your joy. He can't keep your goods. And when I heard that message, I said, well, I, I don't know him. I just heard his message. But I didn't know him then. But I'm just going to do what he says. Because if this is a messenger that God sent into my life, then I must just do what he says. And so those days there were no cell phones. They didn't have car phones. They didn't have, you know, so if you were driving in the traffic and you were talking, you looked a bit mad. <laughs> you know, nowadays if you're talking in a car, people think you're at least on a cell phone or something. You don't look so crazy talking on your own in the car like, nah, 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 nah you know. And people even, you know, if you've got hands, hands-free kit, people still do this and they, nah, 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 you know, and it's okay because cell phones, you know. <laughs> But then, there was none of that. So if you went crazy in the car, you were really crazy. You know. But I learned from Brother Jerry that if you will just keep your praise, no matter what the circumstances, you keep your joy, and you keep praising and praising and praising, and you keep praising for the breakthrough, that Satan cannot keep your stuff. He's got to let it go. He has to let it go. There's no way he can hold on to it. And ever from that day till now, I practiced that in my home. We practice that when we praise together, Pastor Sharon and I. I practice it by myself. And uh, it's been a lifelong habit that we praise, and especially when it gets difficult. Especially when it looks like something's locked tight and it's not getting loose. Then we know, okay, it's really time to praise now. Because if we praise and praise and praise, then Satan can't keep my goods. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. And so, uh, uh, you know, one of the things that has really been a, a, a tremendous breakthrough in our lives uh, is I heard Brother Jerry speaking sometime last year. I heard Brother Jerry speaking. I don't know if it was a previous message that I, I don't recall exactly if it was a previous message of his that I was listening to. Um, the hundredfold return, or sowing in famine, actually is the title of the message, but he didn't call it that he was preaching in a message. It might have been in one of Brother Copeland's conferences. It might have just been something I was listening from a long time ago. You know. But that thing began to roll around in my heart. And this is where a personal prayer time really begins to count. Is if you're a person who is wanting to have a relationship with Jesus, then things begin to happen in your spirit. And things begin to continuously flow in your spirit and then words come out of your mouth. And uh, I'm going to read you a scripture in, here in a minute and, and just to show you that a prayer life is not, is not something where you have to... Uh, you know, the era that I grew up with, you used to have a quiet time. Yes? Well, as a teenager growing up, quiet times were really painful for me. You know, because I didn't want to be quiet ever. You know, as a teenager, you want to be moving. You've got energy to burn. You've got places to go, things to do. You know, who wants to go have a quiet time? You know, besides which, I was up early and going to school and carrying on. And, and yet I knew I was serving God. And I learned to have a walk with God in my school life, where my walk with God was very much day-to-day, moment-to-moment, interactive time with God. And uh, anyway, I got, got to listen to Brother Jerry's message. And, and in, my, in my time with the Lord, I was meditating on... Some of the things that have been said, I was reading some scriptures in the Word, I've been speaking the Word out, and uh, I walked out of my study room and I was walking down the passage, and this praise of victory just jumped out of my heart and into my mouth. And before I knew it, I was walking down the passage and I had my hands up and I was praising Jesus. I was praising Him for victory. I was praising Him for victory over many things. I was praising Him for victory. And, and suddenly I knew 
that, that I had got victory over areas in my life. Hallelujah. And then the rest, when you have that kind of faith jump in your heart and words come out of your mouth, then the, 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 physical, uh, the physical demonstration of it or the manifestation of it is just around the corner. Because then it's already done in the spirit. So Pastor Sharon and I are different kind of prayers. I shared this with you last night. You know, I do spend time privately, quietly, alone with God in a special place. But a lot of my time that I do is I'm active, I'm traveling, I'm moving, I'm always... And I learn to pray... When I was in the military, and I learned to pray when I was in the business world. Because in the business world, I'm faced with a 10-hour work day at least. And I'm faced with customers, I'm faced with employees, I'm faced, faced with business activities. And so, how do you pray? And, and uh, you know, the Apostle Paul says we should pray without ceasing. And so, if that is an instruction to pray without ceasing, then it means you can't drive your car and close your eyes. Right? That means you pray all the time. So then prayer is not so much about what you do with your knees or where you've put your bum or, or what door you've closed to get behind, although that is important. I'm not minimizing that. But what I'm, we are wanting to help you with is encourage you in a spirit of prayer. Which means you are constantly aware of this communion and communication that you're having with God. Allowing His Word to flow in you and through you and letting His words come out of your mouth. Because when His words come out of your mouth, then those words begin to create your world. And then the world that you create with the words that He's put in your heart begins to change everything. Everything. Praise the Lord. I want to just read you this passage of scripture in John chapter 15 verse 7. And I'm reading again from the Amplified Classic. And it says, if you live in me, if you abide vitally united to me, and my words remain in you and continue to live in your hearts. Remember I said yesterday that words matter. So whatever words you have in your heart are the words that are going to come out of your heart. So if my words abide in your heart, remain in you, continue to live in your hearts, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. Is that not prayer? Ask whatever you will, and it will be be done for you. Right? There's no, only some things in here. Ask whatever you will. So, How do you know whether you're asking the right thing? Well, it's found out in the previous part of the verse. If you're abiding in Him and His words are in your heart, then what's coming out of your heart is what He wants for you. And so I've discovered over many years that people want to pray what words they find in themselves, not the words that God wants you to put in yourself. And so if you're just praying the words that you find in yourself, then who knows where those words came from to come in yourself. Maybe they came from the TV about politics. Maybe they came from family members. Maybe they came from different places. But if you just find words in yourself, and those are the words that come out in your prayer life, then that's not going to accomplish much. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm going to just continue this for a moment. When you bear and pro- or produce much fruit, my Father is honored and glorified. This comes right off the scripture. Let my words abide in you. Ask whatever you want, and he'll do it for you. And now he's saying, when you bear much fruit, my Father is honored and glorified. In other words, prayer life is directly connected to honoring and glorifying God, because what's in you is coming out. It's his word that's coming out. You're abiding in him, and those words that come out, he just answers them. And when he answers them, it produces fruit, and he's glorified. Come on, this is a victorious Christian life. So... I, uh, part of my mandate that I have from Pastor Justin and Annette is to, is to help you and encourage you to see prayer not as something that you have to 
Ah, well, let's pray, Tom. <laughs> it's not another prayer meeting, is it? Because who wants to go to a prayer meeting? It's boring. Yeah, it's dull. Well, when we get done with you, <laughs> you're going to be begging Pastor Justin and they say, when are we having our next prayer meeting? When are we having our next prayer meeting? Because... Cause, because we're full of the word and we want to be fruitful and we want to be having many results and being effective. And look what our prayers are doing. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Prayer life is anything but boring. It's like saying having a conversation with God is boring. Well, if your conversations with God are boring, I venture to say maybe it's the words you find in you, not his words that are in you. Because if you're just regurgitating what words you find in you, then that's boring. May I, may I be bold enough to say it's both boring to you and God. Right? I mean, think any of your emotions and stuff that you're going through is a surprise to him. He's been hearing people say those things for thousands of years. And here you are thinking, I'm unique. I think he doesn't know what I feel. So I'll just tell him about the words that I find in myself. Well, go ahead. He's listening. But do you want to glorify him and honor him and produce much fruit? Well, then those words are going to be in you and let them come out. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So my father is honored and glorified and you show and prove yourselves to be the true followers of mine. It's like people want to say, I'll serve in the church, and you should. You know, and I'll do this, and I'll do that, and then you'll know that I'm a disciple. That's not what he says here. All right? What he says here actually is, um, if you glorify and honor my Father because his words are in you, and you ask whatever you want, and he's glorified and honored, then you will show yourself to be followers of mine. Because when you follow God this way, then when the pastor comes and says, hey, we need a few more ushers, it's like guys are breaking the door down. You know, when you need somebody more to help on the sound desk or something, people are busting the door down because, hey, I'm full of fruit. I'm full of productivity. Those words are just coming out of my mouth all the time. I'm, I'm a prayer machine. Because I've got words of God coming out of me. I've got words of God coming out of me. Hallelujah. I have loved you just as the Father has loved me. Abide in my love. Continue in his love with me. This is a partnership. If you get this word, yeah, this is a partnership. God's not leaving you out there to say, I want to see if you can pray. And I want to see how long your knees can handle it. He's saying, come on, draw close to me. Get my words in you. Speak them back to me because they're full of me. And me, when you're full of me, me and me full of you are a powerful team. And I will abide with you and I will love you and my father will love you and we'll do this thing together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you keep my commandments, if you continue to obey my instructions, you will abide in my love and live on in it. Just as I have obeyed my Father's commandments and live on in His love. You really want to know about the true love of God? This is how to do it. You just abide in Him. Then He puts things in your heart to ask for. And when you ask for it, He answers and He delivers. And then you become a productive, fruitful person. One of the things that I sowed a seed into Brother Jerry's ministry was, with, was that we, we, our multimedia uh, ministry would, would go to a, a new level. In a minute, I'm going to have Pastor Sharon come up here. Have you got that card there? You got the points there? Just come up and stand with me, please, darling. No, um, the points. Yes, I know. I've got those points too. Oh, but it's time for you to stand here by me, so just come make space. The 
So, I just want to, I just would like to explain to you what happened was, was we sowed the seed and one of them was multimedia, that we would have growth in our multimedia department. And uh, I want to just explain to you how this works. When I woke up that morning with praise of victory in my mouth, you understand those are words that I had been putting in my heart, that when they came out of my mouth, they were responding to what God wanted me to ask for and now praise for because he says it's on its way. The growth on this part of your ministry is on its way. So, so I went and grabbed Sharon and we went dancing around the house together and we were praising and praising and praising. And uh, so, we, we, if you haven't bought the album yet, Walk in the Light, you need to buy the album, Walk in the Light. Because you need to. It's one of the best praise and worship music albums you'll ever hear in your life. Go buy it in the bookshop if you can't ask some, the pastor to have it available. That album was, the songs were written by my son. And so we decided we were going to get a real, one of the top guys, certainly a really top person to produce the album for us. He's known in, in the USA and he produced the album. So I don't want to hop too much, but if you don't get that album, you're missing out on a great worship time. I want to kind of give you the eagle eye here if you haven't bought that album. So this gentleman comes to produce the album. Now he's, he's such a great artist. I would put him in the category technically talented like a Phil Collins. You know, I mean, he can play drums, he can play bass, he can play electric guitar, he can play, and he can play all of them as well as he can play the others. He's so well sought after in South Africa and the world that, you know, he's just a well sought after guy. So I'm, I'm praying one day, spending time with the Lord, speaking to him, communing with him, his words abiding in me, and he speaks to me in my heart and he says, ask that man to come and help you take your music to the next level that I want to take it to. I said, sir, speaking to the Lord, I said, I don't know if he's saved. He said, I didn't ask you to tell me whether he's saved or not. I told you, (laughs) go and ask him to help you with the music. I said, I don't know if he even believes in faith. He said, that's not your business. He said, go ahead and go and ask him. I said, Lord, he's not going to come and help us in the church. He's such a big name, such a big guy. Why is he going to come to our church and help us with the music? So he just went silent on me, like, you know. (laughs) I told you now, what are you going to do about it? So I went to my son Garth, who's and to Pastor Sharon, who's in charge of the praise and worship in the church as 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 a minister. I said, this is what I believe the Lord wants me to do. They said, well, it's on you. It's on you. you know, it's like, <laughs> the Lord told you it's on you, you know? Yeah. So I asked God to phone him and for him to come and visit with us. And so he came and uh, sitting in, our, in, in my office, my study. And I said to him, look, this is what we want to do with our music. This is where the Lord wants us to go with our worship. And I said, I don't have the technical ability within my team to do this. I don't even know how to assess how technically good or bad they are. And if I did know that, I wouldn't even know. And neither does Garth necessarily. He can hear, but he doesn't know how to take them, grow them to the next level. And or whether we need to get other musicians that that God might want to call into our ministry. But because we're not proficient in in this ministry... They don't even think they can come here because they wouldn't be taken care of because they can't see the talent care. You know, it's like you hear these guys buying quarterbacks and buying all kinds of running backs and things like that. Well, you're not going to attract one of the best running backs of the world into your team if you've got a poor coach. He's going to look at the coach and say, well, I'm not going there. He's going to stunt my career. You get what I'm saying? So I said to him, I want to ask you, will you come and work with us? He said, uh, he went quiet for a little bit, 
he said, let me find out what you're asking. And he, he threw a few things out at me. I said, that's what I'm after. He said, yes, sir, I'll come. I said, what? It's like, I almost expected him to say, you know, something else. He said, yes, I'll come. This is what he said to me. And he said, I'll bring many musicians with me that want to come. I said, tell me why. He said, because today, sir, you have given my talent purpose. I've never had anybody pull a pur- put a purpose on my talent. I've always played with my talent for what I could get out of it. Today, you are the first person that has come to me that has given me a purpose for my talent. And he said, I can tell you that there are many, many people in the industry that are looking for a purpose for their talent other than just making money and just going to gigs and doing stuff. And he says, I know them all, and they're all desperate. And already some of the most famous hit artists in South Africa have come to our church and sat in our church service because he said to them, you better come and see what God's done in my life. And I don't even know what God's done in his life yet. He's not even talking to me. But he's here every Sunday sitting in the church service, and he's... And so now I'm, I'm away for a couple of weeks, you know, and he's been on the phone to my son, Garth. He says, hey, Garth, we can't, when Pastor John gets back, we've got to have developed further with music. We can't let him come back, and we've just stayed in the same place. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, well, here's the thing is we sowed our seed. And we prayed and praised. We prayed and praised. Yes. And then we got the whole church to incorporate prayer, to begin to pray with us. And believe with us corporately. So guess what happened? When he came into the church, they didn't look at sitting in the church and say, I wonder if this guy's saved and what's happening to the pastor. And is the pastor smoking his socks? Oh, that's a South African thing. You know? It's like, has he gone a bit crazy, you know, inviting guys like this? No, on the contrary, what's happened is that everybody said, God's brought someone that is at the highest level of musical talent. And so the the musicians are beginning to come to our church and they're beginning to... And he knows, I can't just get musicians and create a band here. I've got to get musicians that understand this message and they want to be part of this ministry and they want to hear what's going on here. I didn't even ask him to do that. He's just sifting them all out. No, he can't come. You can't come. Oh, you got the right spirit. You come. Sit in the church and come and listen to what's happening with this pastor and this church. And then if you're okay with it, then you can come play in the band. Hallelujah. You see, don't you want to be part of a corporate prayer team that as a whole church, you pull those resources into the church. God will give Pastor Justin the download and he say, you got to do this. And he says, come church, we're going to pray about this. We're going to get this done in prayer. Get, and then when the guy arrives, you don't look at him with like uh, uh, Brother Hagen always used to say, like a bullfrog in a hailstorm, you know. Where does this guy come from? You know, where do they come from? Well, are they even saved? Are they part of the faith movement? Don't worry, God will sort them out and they'll become faith people very quickly. If they hang around your kind of people, they can just change. They don't want to, they don't want to hang around judgmental, critical Christians that have been around for 30 years and they want to judge everything the pastor's doing and they want to judge what the ushers are doing and they want to have something to say. No, if you become a praying church, you've got no judgment to make because you've asked the Father and He wants to answer you and you become productive. Hallelujah. And so right now you want to praise God that He gave you great pastors. Didn't He? Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. What's that, sir? I'm especially grateful because I don't have Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. And so... Uh, Pastor Sharon, will you pray for Pastor Justin and Annette? And, and then they're all going to agree with us once we're done, once you start, once, once you've finished praying. Just pray that they will become everything that God wants them to become. Yes. Just out of your spirit. This is unprepared. We're flying with the Holy Ghost. You just pray. Yes. And this is especially important how we've taught our people in corporate prayer. That when someone is praying, 
inspired by the Holy Spirit in their understanding. It's not a time for you to be praying in tongues. It's a time for you to hook up with a person that's praying and get into agreement. And then when it's time to pray in tongues, we all pray in tongues. Right? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, Father, if I go right deep down into my heart now, and I really want to ask you something according to your word, Father. Father, Kenneth Hagen said that there would come a time and there would come a day when the fivefold ministry would stand in the fullness of their office. Father, and it's my request to know today, and everybody's get it's our request actually, because we have in corporate prayer now, that Pastor Justin, all of his gifts and callings, and all of Annette's gifts and callings, we call them forth, we call them out, because when they stand in their fullness of their office, then we can be more. Because they are more. When the fullness of their gift comes to us, Lord, then we are equipped. Because that's what the fivefold ministry is for, to equip us, bring us to maturity, Father. So tonight, in agreement, we call forth Pastor Annette and Justin, the fullness of their office. Do you mind if I just pray for them in the spirit first, please? And then we'll pray together. Recreba sito freke mandro preske skris kita fruterba. Yesa lo creen tu presuti. Hila cross de fresh crema, de fresh crema, de fresh crema. En robra cres of ampro tiro testo kish. Afro bredo bicho fra macasu. Tristo crafon de preve naco dovo. Shibro dista tapno keskesi. Oh! Ya, ovre bese mato kote pete fa jomupo pori, momobo pori, ish aftu, yente krentu stofro broshke, efre krentu, alagro, alagro, e enge geshke, oa, sto preso ma kote fere apro mi, ye santu kristu. Yo Santo Cristo i brev tu baga. I hela. Oi, yo le escreve le hela. Ambonge de que das que du. I su cremete ka. Shko fuse prebese. I just let my spirit speak to the Father. The interpretation is up to him. For the answer to come to them. And the fullness to come to them. And now. I yes. want to pray. Yes, I yes. want to pray. An yes. interpretation. Okay. This is not necessarily the only only one, and you don't have to have an interpretation. Ooh. But this is how the Lord wants me to pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for their faithfulness. Yes. And thank you, Lord, that you have placed them alongside Brother Jerry yes. and Miss yes. Carolyn to do this job. Yes. And so now, Father God, we declare that there are no limitations. No. There are no blockages. No. There are not, There is nothing that will cause their foot to get caught in a hidden snare. We thank you, Father, that they grow strong together, strong in unity, strong in the Word of God together. And I thank you, Lord, that the desire that's in their heart, that they would take this whole body and will grow and get stronger. And this whole body will become a body of prayer and a body of faith. We thank you, Lord, that this materializes through them. This is birthed in them and it flows through them to the people, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. And now, as a congregation, we let our spirit speak to you further about the fullness of the of what of what you've called them to do to come forth, Father. Yes. We we let our spirit speak to you now, Father. Si basso, buono, 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 buono
Kabara Botre, Tremendre, Trebo de Shegebre, Gesandra Mano. Mia Masha Kanamana Bagoso Boro Distili Tolo Brala Rao. Mieha to Kolo Brose. Sima Noshi Kolo Monde Gesha Kalabata Labote Lebetre Begisha. Sima Noshi Kolo Vreta Bolo Proboste Kalabrava. Can we praise him for that? Can we praise him for the answer for that? Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. You've already Hallelujah. interpreted this heavenly language, Father. And the answer is already on its way in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. My babe, yes. is there something you want to pray personally or shall we, shall we just move on from do, here? Well, I, I, I want us to do the next step and I want you to stay here with me. Yes. So this book, uh, this, this book is, is the Holy Weave, the glory book. So you remember that Brother Jerry had a word, show us your glory. And so what we did was, yeah, these are his eight messages. So he came to our church and he came to minister at the beginning of last year. It wasn't last year, was it? The year before that. Yeah. And he came and he brought a series of eight messages over a period of week to us. And so what we did was we took uh, a brief synopsis of that message that he preached on that day or that night. And we gave the brief synopsis in the book and then a confession, a declaration, which we wanted to have everybody so see it as a corporate church. So... We didn't do this just because Pastor Sharon and I wanted to do this and, and, and this is important for us to have what Brother Jerry said in our ministry. Yeah. We wanted everybody in our ministry to have the same growth. Yes. 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 So, so we, crea- we created this book which was based on his eight messages because this is what the Lord showed us, that he brought a bag of seeds to us. Yes. Words. And, and, and if I have an encouragement for you today, I want to say that every Sunday, the pastor brings a, a seed to you. Brother seed. Jerry, if he's preaching here, brings a seed to you. What you do with that seed becomes the, becomes the, the course of your future. Yes. If you do nothing with that seed, all it was is a seed that came to your life and perhaps it fell on hard ground and the birds of the air came and plucked it away. What birds? Any kind of activity that's going on in your life plucks it away and you don't even remember what the pastor preached last Sunday. Or alternatively, that seed will go into, into, into ground and then, wow, that's a great word, I think. You know, and you talk to about it to a couple of people and the Bible says it produces some fruit, but then it gets choked or the, or the sun beats on it and it dies. It doesn't have enough root because you don't continue with it long enough. Or the word grows up and then the cares of this world the riches of this world and the lust of other things that are happening around you, although the seed is growing, it comes and chokes the word. And so every Sunday, the pastor or Brother Jerry's got to get a new fresh word and, and he's looking for a new piece of soil to dig it, to plant it in your heart. And then, but he's finding, what's all this stuff happening in all the people's hearts? I trust you're beginning to see how important corporate prayer is. It's not about having a meeting where a lot of people come and pray. It's about a spirit of prayer that is corporately encouraged and cultivated. So on message five, I'm going to give you a synopsis of what he preached. This is what Brother Jerry says. Why do we get so fidgety and always want something new and think our church can't provide it? I really believe personally that this is why most of the body of Christ does not flourish. (laughs) They may experience some blessings from time to time. They might experience some breakthroughs from time to time, but they don't flourish because the Bible clearly says in Psalm 92 that the righteous shall flourish, and those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall continue to flourish. So we're going to talk about planted before the weekend is up, but we're already touching on it. But wouldn't it be a whole lot better to look out across an audience and think, man, these people are planted. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that those 
that are planted in the house of the Lord, they're going to flourish. So don't be so quick to move. Don't be so quick to, you know, go to latest thing that is happening. Don't follow fads. Follow the word. If you, if you stay planted and we all have that attitude, dear Lord, what do you suppose would happen in our church services? What do you think would happen in our church services? If you all became steadfastly planted and then you begin to get to corporately connect with each other through the messages, because that's going to be the anchor. A lot of people go to church because of the fellowship. Fellowship can't anchor you because you are going to get offended with somebody somewhere along the line, and then you're going to stop the fellowship and go and find another church to fellowship with. Fellowship is important, but it's the word that holds you together. We would no longer have church services. We would have encounters with God every time we came together. Can you say amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. You would have to lock the doors to keep people from spending the night in there. May it happen so, Lord, in this church in Crowley. Hallelujah. And this is, this is the declaration which we, the seed that we have made for everybody available in our church. They, they still have this book. It's still online. They can still get it if they need it, if they've, if they've gone through it and they need it. But we chose to put a copy in their hands and then make it available as an online booklet as well. I carry mine on my iPad. I brought this to show you. Because my iPad can go with me everywhere. And this little book can too. You're right. But this little book becomes another little book, becomes another little book, becomes another little book, and then before you know it, you can, especially when you're traveling overseas, it becomes a lot of books. Anyway, I can't really get distracted. You distract me, babe. <laughs> Always have, your whole life. This is what we said. My generation will see the glory of God. This is our declaration based on what Brother Jerry preached. My generation will see the glory of God. God intends to show us His glory. So when is it going to happen? When the church starts hungering for it. When the church starts praying it in. When the church believes what He says. We are getting closer, praise God. We're getting closer. Well, what have we seen in this week? Praise God. God doesn't need the whole rest of the world. He just needs a few people. This goes on. I don't want to read the whole thing to you, but I'll read a little bit more to you. We've got the Father. He's the, he's the Father of glory. We have the Son who is the Lord of glory, the King of glory. We've got the Holy Ghost who is, who is uh, referred to us, the Spirit of glory. See the glory in the Godhead. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we make this declaration. Our seed that we sow into our hearts. Now, guess what? If you've been doing this every day in the week based on the last week's Sunday message, what happens to you when you come to church next Sunday? What's, what's in you that brings you to church next Sunday? It's not, well, I think, let's see what the pastor's going to preach today. And maybe my favorite person will be playing the guitar and that'll make me feel good. You know? And, uh, well, they give coffee in the, in the you know, outside afterwards and that's worth going for and hey I've got to go to church somewhere so I might as well be here where things are pretty nice and I feel inspired you know to win and overcome in life when I've left here I mean those are all good things but that's not where God wants us to stay what God wants us to do is to have a word that is just growing inside us growing inside us and as it comes out it's like now imagine what happens when you all are praying this in the week, y'all, you know, when you all are praying this in the week, and then you come into the foyer, and you begin to talk to each other, what kind of words are going to come out of it, what are you going to find in your heart, what kind of words, those are God's words, that you've been speaking to him, you've been speaking for him, and you've been changing the atmosphere around you, everywhere you touch, you've been speaking these words for a week, when you come to church, it's like, what's the pastor going to preach, and when he starts preaching, it's, yes, preach it brother, preach it, ah, glory to God, and suddenly what happens is that, the seed becomes a harvest, 
And the harvest begins to bring the presence of God in here. Your heart becomes better able to receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We will talk some more about this, right? Yes, we will. How the Lord taught us where we were planted for 19 years. He taught us to listen to our pastor's message every Sunday and meditate on it throughout the whole week and take seed from the message to sow into our hearts. It's how he taught us. We could never understand why people in our large congregation would come to us and say, have you read this book? Have you listened to that message? Did you hear that preacher? We were so busy getting so full of the Sunday morning message. I didn't know where people found time to do that. You know what I mean? And so I just, and that's how we found in, uh, that's, that's what we s- tell our people in our church. You have got too much already for the whole week from the one meal you get on a Sunday morning. It's already too much. If you've ever even tried it to take that Sunday message and the few scriptures that have come powerfully and just meditate it on during the week, it's like, um, I'm already going by Friday, Saturday. Oh, I just so much that I get it all because Sunday morning's message is coming. So now that's what being planted is. It's not coming to church. If you're a plant to get planted, your roots are going. You've got the root, they've got the word seed going in you bearing root and growing fruit. The word seed that God gives the pastor that is seeking for the seed from the Holy Spirit of what to bring us every Sunday. And the Holy Spirit saying, these are the words, Pastor Justin, these are the words. Or like Brother Jerry said, I heard words 2020, 2020, I heard words. What are you supposed to do with those words? The sower sows the word. You're supposed to sow the words you hear here in this place. You're planted here. You're not planted everywhere. Should I go sit down, my baby? Is this enough? Sure. Glory to God. I'd like you all to stand for a minute, please. Do you want me to go sit down? No, just stay here. Okay. If we had a quick preaching tonight, right now, you would already have enough knowledge and understanding about how you can't separate your individual prayer life from a corporate prayer life. And how uh, you can't just come to a corporate prayer meeting with a certain condition and think, well, I think I'll go there and I'll be, let the people pray me into a better state of mind. (laughs) You know, I mean, that's not why you go to a prayer meeting. When you go to a prayer meeting, you're coming with the supply of the Spirit and you're coming to bring your gift and your calling and you're coming to help. You're coming alongside, you're coming to do something significant. Hallelujah. And so I would like us just to praise and thank God for thank God for 60 seconds that the words that have already been preached find root in our hearts and find proper execution in this church. As we give thanks, it will be done. We ask you, Father, that as we give thanks, this will be done in this church. We thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That there will be proper execution of hearing the word, receiving the word, living and abiding in the word, and then speaking it out corporately in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this whole body of believers that are hearing your word tonight. That they are being changed. That they are immediately being impacted by the word. And not one word will return to you void. But it will accomplish everything that you have sent it out to do. That this is a house of prayer. This is a powerful house of prayer. Where the fervent effectual prayer of righteous men. Makes much power available. And is effective in its working father. Hallelujah. This is an effective producing house of prayer right here in Fort Worth Crowley. Hallelujah. 
Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, my darling. I'm wanting to uh, just share with you in, in uh, this last portion, and we're going to do some more praying. Are you all enjoying this prayer meeting? Yes. You see, this is, this is a pattern of how we can pray. Okay, when you come to prayer meetings as you grow, there will be less teaching and more praying. But what we're patterning for you is the way you can have prayer meetings. Yes. Is you... Is you give a bit of information, a bit of teaching on a subject, and then you begin to release prayers yes. corporately. So I, I, I don't mean to offend you. I don't want to offend you. But if I do offend you, then you should pray <laughs> and get rid of your offense. <laughs> like I said last night, there is no right or wrong way to have a prayer meeting, although I think there are many prayers that are more effective, more powerful, and are dynamic and make power available to work than other prayers. Like if I pray my emotions and I pray what words I find in myself, well, God hears them, but that's not a surprise to Him. He can't do anything with it. Only the Holy Spirit can maybe comfort you a little bit, but that's all you might feel is a bit comforted. Well, if you're living as a Christian that's looking for one comfort after another, guess what? Your whole life is just going to look for one comfort after the other. And then you're never going to grow up and mature as a Christian. So what you need to do is be someone that says, hey, I want to become a producing, fruitful, powerful believer. By the way, just so that you know, the most powerful believer on the earth is not a fivefold minister. The most powerful believer on the earth is a completely dedicated disciple. Because if you're a preacher that's called to preach, but you're not a disciple, your gift is wasted. If you're an evangelist and you're leading people to the Lord, but you are not a disciple, your gift may work, but before God, you're not accomplishing much. Because it's just your gift working. It's not the Christ in you that's working. Hello. So the most powerful believer on the planet is not me as Pastor John. It's not an apostle. It's a disciple. Now when you have a a true disciple who is in the office of a pastor or a disciple, then you've got a powerful dynamic duo that God always intended. Which is why the apostle Paul said, I beat my body daily. I subject myself. I put myself under so that I don't disappoint you in my character and my lifestyle. Because I understand that the Christ in me needs to be the powerful person in me. The disciple in me needs to be the powerful person. I'm just a messenger to deliver the rest. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, I mean, this is a pastor's dream. Right, Pastor Justin? Where you've got a church full of disciples, and they don't, they, you know what a disciple won't do? It won't hang around every corner questioning what he's doing. Why? Well, because you've received the word, you've been meditating on the word, you're abiding in him, the words are abiding in him, and you're speaking the words, and you're asking him, and he's delivering for you. And so when you come and you hang out in church, it's like, Pastor, we're with you, man. We're with you. We are with you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. So when Jesus addressed when Jesus addressed Matthew, uh 
when he addressed Peter in the book of Matthew, and he said, on this rock I will build my church. He, the word church that he used there was the word ecclesia. So he was well aware of what he, words he was using. Jesus never used a word that the Father didn't authorize him to use. So if he meant to say synagogue, then he would have said synagogue. He did not say synagogue. He said ecclesia. So the ecclesia is those that are citizens of a country, those that are living in their geographic location, that are to come and have uh, conversations that would set the rules of government in that area. So when, God, when Jesus said to, to Peter, this revelation that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, on this revelation, I will build my ecclesia. What he was do using is he was saying, the revelation of who Christ is to you will build an ecclesia and the gates of hell cannot stand against that ecclesia. So that ecclesia means that's a citizenship of people that are called in a location and they are called together by a council and they would normally send out someone who would be a caller and he would call them out and say, we're having ecclesia, we're having ecclesia. And what that meant is that we're going to discuss matters of importance of governance. So if you want to hear what's going on in, in, in the community and you want to have a say about what's going on in the community, come to the ecclesia. So when Jesus called Peter and said to Peter on this revelation that Christ is the son of the living God, on this revelation I will build my ecclesia and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it or will not prevail against it. What's he saying? He's saying I'm built on the revelation of who I am, my words abiding in you, you can become the governing, ordering, ordaining, commanding, rule-setting people in that region, in that territory, in order for the government to work so that the gates of hell cannot stand against it. So why do you think the church is in such poor condition? The church is in poor condition because the church is, doesn't understand ecclesia. So I ask you tonight, believers, do you want to be part of an Ecclesia church? You see, if you're an Ecclesia church, you're committed to the community. You're committed to stay there. You can't just say, I don't like the way these guys conduct Ecclesia. I think I'll go somewhere else. And Oh, well, that doesn't sound so good. I'll go somewhere else. If you're called to an Ecclesia, and certainly Heritage of Faith is a, is a well-established Ecclesia. How do I know that? Because the message that has been preached here is a message that is the truth in the Word of God. Not only that, it is properly orchestrated and structured according to the Word of God, with apostolic oversight, pastoral oversight, and a, and a structure of leadership in the church. It's a proper church. So how do, you, how do you orchestrate Ecclesia? I've heard this. Uh, so, first thing I'm going to say is, at this point in time, Pastor Justin has appointed me tonight to be the facilitator of an ecclesia. Normally, he would do it or someone else would do it, facilitate an ecclesia. We're talking about corporate prayer. Okay. So we're facilitating an ecclesia. Now, I, if we are going, the way that you are sitting now and the way you're paying attention, it means you're listening to me, you're interpreting what I'm saying. You're, you're kind of taking it in and you're getting ready to, to uh, be ready to respond to it. Right? So you're doing a proper function of Ecclesia. Let me show you what an Ecclesia is not. I need, a, I need Pastor Sharon and my son Bryn, will you come up for a minute? Pastor Christy, just come up for a minute. Here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to announce that we are just going to pray for Pastor Justin and Annette. Okay. okay. What I want you to do is just walk around and pray in the Spirit. 
So we pray for Pastor Justin and Annette. And uh, Lord, we ask you to bless them and uphold them and encourage them. Bless them, Lord. Okay, thank you. <laughs> do you think that's what an ecclesia sounds like? If you do that in a, in a legislative meeting in Fort Worth or Tarrant County, they'll throw you out because you're disturbing the peace. Right. So what Christians think is a corporate prayer meeting is a whole bunch of individuals that come to church they get a subject and then they walk around the building saying, I wonder what I'm eating for dinner tonight. I wonder where the best lamb chops are. Or the next beef fillet is. Oh, those guys are finished. Maybe there's another subject. Let's go up there and find out what's going on. I don't mean to offend you, but if you're offended, get over it. Because that's not corporate prayer. That's just a bunch of people coming as individuals together to pray individually. And so then corporate, then corporate mayor meetings are nothing more than a personal prayer meeting that you can have at home. And so that's why people stay at home. They don't come to full corporate prayer meetings because they can do the same thing at home. So why must I come and do it in church when I'm doing the same thing at home? So again, you know, if you choose to pray like that, you know, it's better you pray than you don't pray. And it's, Okay, I mean, you know, pray on your own, fine. You can do whatever praying you want to do on your own. I'm just sharing with you that we have pressed into God for many, many years because we recognize that unless you have a praying church continuously, we've heard this from all of the men of God that have put us into our lives, that prayer is one of the most difficult meetings to keep alive. It's also one of the most important things that you can ever do in a church is to pray. So how is it possible that prayer meetings keep closing down and yet it's the most important thing to keep alive? Well, there's not, maybe it's not what we're doing, it's how we're doing it. So if it's how we do it, is it not better for us rather than go off and pray over here because I feel safe praying here? Get over yourself and don't feel safe. It's not about your comfort. It's about what you're about to do for God. It's about... That's about having a facilitator that's hearing from God, a spiritual leader in the church, and he pronounces what we are going to be ecclesiaing about, ruling about in the spirit, and then we get to praying together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, tomorrow we'll get into more of some of the structure of how we go about it. And tonight I've just illustrated one point to you about how, how we think the enemy has been able to distract the church and stop corporate prayer meetings because it's one of the most dangerous, powerful things that can happen in the universe. So you remember what I said last night, that, that how, do spirits, how do spirits actually do war in the spirit realm? It's about words. And so what is the devil going to do to you to try and stop you? He's going to bring words. He's going to bring words and ideas of words. And he's going to bring them to you to stop you from doing what you must do, which is to speak his word. He doesn't care what word you speak as long as it's not his word. So if you talk about your emotions and you talk about all the sad things that are happening to you and you talk about all kinds of imaginary things that may or may not happen to you because the government is going one way and the other and all that stuff, you know, those words get into your spirit and then you're not certain about what words of yours carry authority anymore. Yes. Yes. I'm preaching good. Yes. I'm preaching good. And by the way, none of what I'm preaching, I haven't been taught by my spiritual father. He taught me this stuff, so you blame him for me preaching like this. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, if we are going to be people that are properly going to execute corporate prayer, then we are going to be a people... That if we, have a, if we have a little book that has got a message, so what we do, I mean, this is what we do. That's what we do. No. 
That's what we do. <laughs> so, so this has become a, 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 a structure in our church, and I'm just sharing what we do because we, we take the words that preachers preach from our pulpit seriously. Because if God has sent a messenger with a message to preach to you, then he's designed that messenger and that message to have maximum impact for your life. And if you think, and I don't mean to name names about any, if you think some other tele-evangelist or tele-mighty preacher, event, guys that are preaching out there that leave you well motivated, that their words are more important than the words where you are supposed to legislate, where you are supposed to be an ecclesia that's ruling, then what you're doing is you're, you're hearing stuff that God's called other people to do or not. And you're hearing their stuff and you're bringing it into your ecclesia and saying, well, we should be doing that stuff. No, what you should be doing is hearing the word that God's bringing you, then receiving it and meditating on it and letting build on it. And then you pray back words that he wants you to pray. And then when you come with those prayers, you as a body begin to legislate what God called you to legislate in the spirit. And so, again, if, I, if I'm shooting some holy cows, then let them die. Don't try and resurrect them. The advantage of coming from a long way away is that Pastor Justin can fix everything. I broke. You know? No, no, that's not my intent. My intent is to, is to help him. You know? Um, but... As a, as a body of believers, if our responsibility is to legislate and to be, take up our positions that we are supposed to be taking up in the church, then we've got to get ourselves some order in the church. We've got to get ourselves some structure in the church. And this is not about, this is not about dominating someone in personality or doing s some weird thing. This is about what, what Jesus put in place. Okay. So you want to know what it is? Well, you can read in the book of Acts or the end of Luke. And, and you can read that Jesus told his disciples to go to Jerusalem and wait. Until the, until the, the, the power comes on you. Right? So he just told them to go wait. I ask you this question. Did they listen to his word? Did he deliver a message? So he was the messenger. So the messenger didn't give them anything else other than go wait there till power comes. Uh, what are we going to eat? Are we going to have to fast? Can we drink water? Can we have beds in there? Do we have to stay awake the whole time? Can we sleep a little bit? What about natural personal hygiene? What are we going to do about that? I'm trying to say to you that when you allow your natural man to take over, then you allow many words that are in you to stop obeying the word that God gave you. And you allow all those details of planning and organizing and everything to come into a place where you forget what God told you. And so what your first step is, let's go obey and then we find out when everybody's thinking, maybe we let five people out to go and wash. When they come back out, five more people. But they didn't know that until they were, until they were together. And they know, Jesus knew they had to eat. I mean, it doesn't say whether they fasted the whole time or not. But, but whatever their function was, they got to know what to do as they were obedient. Right? And the Bible is not full of too many specifics about that, but, uh, you know... Whatever it was, they went to obey it. They did what the Word said. And so because they did what the Word said, the outcome was sure. Okay. So one last thing that I want to share about this. Again, if I shoot your holy cow, let it die. Don't resurrect it. I want to encourage you that in your personal prayer life, you do not concern yourself too much with praying against dark forces and praying against the work of the enemy. 
I want to encourage you to pray what the Bible says that He wants you to do. So I, again, I learned this from Brother Jerry a long time ago. He asked this question. He said, is it better to have a a financial miracle or to live in financial prosperity? So financial miracles are good, but they mean you keep having to depend on a financial miracle. But if you live in financial prosperity, then you don't have to have too many financial miracles because the financial prosperity keeps flowing. Right? And he asked the same question. Is it better to have a healing miracle or live in divine health? Well, a healing miracle is important when you need one, but it's better to live in divine health. So God has got a different standard that we should live by as opposed to keep on believing Him for miracles. So I say this to you. The church has become fixated about binding the spirit of abortion. Stop it. Why don't you rather pray and say, Let us as a legislating... Because, you know, there's no accountability when you pray like that. It makes you sound super spiritual. It makes you sound socially and politically and spiritually correct. I wonder how many Christians... Just bear with me, please. How many Christians do you think have prayed against the spirit of abortion? Over the last 30 years. A lot. I wonder what would happen if we had a church that was the ecclesia that began to understand what is already bound in heaven, we can bind on earth. What is already loosed in heaven, we can loose on earth. Instead, what we want to do is tell God what he must bind and what he must loose. One thing I know for sure. I have no doubt that whatever's in this word, I have complete authority to do it. Right? So, I don't want to get into the doctrine of that. I'm wanting to encourage you that if you are, if your praying is predominantly against something, I'm saying, why don't you rather pray for something according to the word of God Then if God leads you to pray against something, then let him show you in the word what you should be praying against. Why am I doing this and saying this for corporate prayer? Well, if the corporate prayer comes along and you all start praying, uh, we we bind the spirit of abortion, and we're going to spend the next 10 minutes binding the spirit of abortion. You're focusing on what the works of the devil are. What we want to do is focus on what the works of God are. We want to declare what God's will is, not what the devil's will is. We know that the spirit of abortion is wrong. We know that. But let's build an ecclesia that gets in agreement with God's word, that gets in agreement with each other. And let's begin to change some of the things that this church can change in your local community, in the local area. And then as our confidence grows to legislate in the spirit realm, where we issue authority in the spirit realm because we come together corporately, then the corporate power begins to lead us and guide us. And the facilitator doesn't have to worry about whether you're falling asleep in prayer meeting. (laughs) Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. I'll tell you what, I know this. That when the light of God is in me and I come into a place, Brother Jerry's experienced this many times in Africa. I live in Africa. The light of God is in me. When I come into a place and there's devils and demons operating there, they, you know about it. And they know about it. You don't have to call on them. They call on you. They, they want to, they, they are, they confront the light that is in you because the light that is in you begins to challenge them. You don't have to say anything. If the light's in you, it just challenges them. You get what I'm saying? If you are an ecclesia that's called out by God to govern according to His government, according to the peace that He brings on the earth, according to the ways that He wants you to walk in as a church, then what happens is the light in this church grows. The power in this church grows. The authority in this church grows. And the ecclesia becomes a body that the whole 
the whole of this area, the whole of the city begins to hear in the spirit realm, the ecclesia is at work, the prayers are being heard, there's a unity here, there's a biblical prayer pattern here, there is an authority structure here, people are not just wildly scattering their prayers everywhere, there's authority and power because there's submission to authority and that delegated authority is delegated authority to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so then when we begin to pray like that, we begin to change everything. We begin to change everything. Glory to God. I'm going to... Pastor Sharon, have you got anything you want to share? Is that good? <laughs> Thank you, babe. You sounded very enthusiastic there, but I know you're thinking... So we have a we have a we have worked very long hard on our in our ministry to build the people that are prayers. I think Pastor Justin and Annette had a taste of that when they came to South Africa. We know how to pray. And and I thank you. Pastor Justin, for having the courage, really the courage and your conviction to have us come here. I appreciate you and Annette very much for, for opening the, the, the platform and the pulpit for us to come and preach it. I too, uh, it takes courage because we know that every time we have gone to a place where we have taught this, it's changed the church, it's changed the leadership of the church. Uh, it's changed the way that they've been able to function and it's caused things to come about in churches that, where they've been struggling to get things done for many years and they get it done. You know? But it does require some changes. And so thank you, sir, for allowing me to be bold. And I know I'm in a son in the house, Brother Jerry's house, and thank you, Brother Jerry, for letting us preach here. Uh, I'm going to just finally just read this to you. Because we have a, every Sunday, every week, we pray for our government. We pray for our nation. Yes. And so I want to tell you that when I started this process of praying for my nation, I, I'm honest with you when I tell you that I did not have faith in my prayers that my nation would change. I'm having an honest moment with you. But I heard Brother Copeland say, he long time ago, he said, God's instruction in the Word of God is that you must pray for your government. And you don't have to believe what it does. You just have to believe what God's Word says you must do. So it doesn't matter whether you are praying and seeing any results. You just have to believe that your prayers will bring results. And so, so we've been doing this for a long time. So... Uh, We had a really, really corrupt government, which I can say, thank God we have a new leader in government who is not corrupt, and he's been the leader of this government for about 18 months. But about six months before, before we had a change in government, we had this prayer, which came out of my spirit on a Sunday morning. So I declare this morning, before heaven and before earth, that even though I am only one voice, I declare that we will contend in the Spirit. In the Spirit we will contend, we will contest abuse of power in this nation. We will contest in the Spirit the rights and wrongs of all of the people of this nation. We will contest in the Spirit for the will of God to be done in this nation and not for the will of man. We will contest in the Spirit in this church and in this community. We will contest in the Spirit for what God wants for His people that represents the will of Jesus, not the will of the political party. I declare that in Jesus' name this morning. Hallelujah. I declare it in Jesus' name that every single prayer that we have, every prayer that we have prayed in this church will be a prayer that is stored up in the bowls of heaven. This is Revelations. Stored up in the bowls of heaven that will be poured out at the right moment. 
the right way to the right person, to the right place, to the right geographical situation where there is, where there is necessary involvement, that political climates of people will be changed and that new and new so that the will of God will be done in this nation in Jesus' name. I continue on for quite a little bit, and I just want to leave you with that. So, this came upon me. Why did this come upon me? Because I called an ecclesia. Our church of prayers, I called them. I, in that moment of ecclesia, the Spirit of God came upon me and said, make a declaration about your nation and about the political leaders of I mean, I, I didn't know what I was going to say. I was, it was coming out by the Spirit. It was recorded, and this is what it was recorded. Well, six months later, the ruling party had an a internal serious debate with the National Executive Council of the internal ruling party. And as our political system works, you vote for a party and they elect the president. You don't vote for a man, you vote for a party. So the party decided the current president is so corrupt we've got to get rid of him. So they appointed the guy that's in there now who's a Christian, a born again Christian. And he appointed a special, a special council against corruption that's headed by one of the best judges in the nation. And just last week, that corrupt president was ordered by the highest court in the land because he said, uh, too much time has gone by and the facts are all going to be wrong and so I don't have to stand trial. And that court said, your, misdeme your misdemeanors and your deeds that you did wrong, you're going to stand trial for it. Yes. Hallelujah. I, I know there are many other people praying in South Africa for this, but I'm trying to indicate to you that when you are a people that are constant... In prayer, God will use your prayers to legislate what His will is for a nation. Yes. And finally, I say, it was Brother Hagen that said, it was Brother Hagen that said he had a dream and God visited him. And he said that God is holding the church responsible for the economic climate of the nation, the political climate of the nation, and the whole well-being of the nation. Well, let me tell you, that's not going to happen when you've just got a few people walking around a building on a Wednesday or a Thursday night thinking that they're praying. You've got to have a corporate prayer structure that you're in unity, that you are well orchestrated, that you pray according to the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, we, you know, while we were away, we didn't have to tell our prayer, our, the people in our church to pray more. They let Pastor Sharon know via social media. They let her know that as from yesterday, they have had extra prayer, called extra prayer meetings. The delegated authority we left there, they've been doubling up on the prayers for us in these services so that God can get done in these services what needs to get done. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So can we just pray in tongues and build up our faith so that we can get this thing? Let's pray in tongues just for, for 60 seconds. Just pray in the Spirit. Shombresta campo cole brete lebra. Lambrondo sto colo bro dege bongo sta hambe da gati omo. Lembrendo shombro moco sa cala bara doste. Kibriti bosti. Tribena mandro mondre baste de libro. Hash de fando. Sehende betege. Combogo de gese gelevra. Libri dosto brote ke mata mano sombrone. Andrama sandro monto koshe. Kibrigi disim bro de libri da masho bro desta. Ya aso se ebete omote ele mekete mote kama kando kosokolo mote ke sibriti kimbramato son probote se kebrekete ambra sho lele hese le vala litu yo lo mote pamako so brovo koso brote shebre bagantro mo 
ri ba shakana manda bara kasada praise you jesus praise you jesus praise you jesus i'm just wanting to see if i can quickly find this uh here it is we have personalized this we have personalized this for south africa but this was a word that was spoken by brother kenneth copeland on thursday the 10th of november 2011 and he was talking about 2012 and he said 2012 I'll tell you about 2012 it's going to be a year of great joy for those who know joy it will be a time of marvelous breakthroughs this is a time of victory it's a time when people begin to realize that my word is a living word that my spirit is a living spirit and that you are my voice on the earth and your voice is the voice of victory so rejoice and shout and understand that the breakthroughs that you've sought and watched over prayed over stood in faith for ah don't turn loose now Don't turn loose now because they're at hand. They are at hand. They're on top of you right now. Praise God. Have no worry. Do not be in fear about America. Don't be in fear over the failure of this nation. This is not the time for this nation to fail. I'm not a, I'm not done with it yet. It it may come as a surprise. This nation is not done with me yet, says the Lord. Hallelujah. We have a job to do and this year will be like no other where this nation is concerned and many will say oh woe it is us and and you know what oh woe will be them and there will be others that will say oh we can't win we can't win and to them we they can't win ah but to those of them that say ha 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 this is a time of greatness america again and it is my nation and it is god's nation and we are right where we are supposed to be he has he has right he, where he wants us and our future is bright because god is still lord over america hallelujah that was done in 2012 I wonder if that word came to pass. I wonder if that word came to pass. I'll tell you what church the way it comes to pass is God begins to deal in the hearts of people that are spiritual leaders and they speak words out of their spirit by the Holy Spirit. Then it requires an ecclesia church to take that word and to begin to govern with that word in the spirit and begin to speak words together in unity and in power and strength that will cause it to come to pass. We are not supposed to be a weak church that doesn't come to prayer meetings. We are supposed to be a powerful church that can't wait to come to prayer meetings. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And uh, I, you know Pastor Sharon and I we've spent lots of hours actually preparing for this conference not because of what we needed to get it was actually what we had to leave out. And so we're doing our, our our best by the Holy Spirit to give you the highlights of what we what we know and what we do so that we can leave enough deposit in you from the years that we have learned and i want to add this tomorrow morning pastor sharon is going to do some amazing praying with you she's going to she's going to she's got that activating spirit she has we recognize it i recognize it and i rejoice in it hallelujah And so she's going to do a lot of the work tomorrow. But uh, I want to say to you that most of what we've learned, everything of what we learned, we've learned by studying Charles Finney, Brother Hagan, um Brother Copeland, Brother Jerry, Dr. Yongi Cho. You know, we visited we 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 visited Brother Cho's church um in South Korea because we wanted to glean some things about prayer. And uh, if you've read this book um called the fourth dimension you will know that in his book he says many people from america come to my church that's got over a million people in it and they want to know what the secret of my success is and he says i tell them it's prayer and so and then they want to know but what else are you doing 
And he says, it's prayer. And, uh, but what else do you do? It's prayer. And he says this. You can stop preaching in my church. You can stop home sales in my church. You can stop marketing my church. You can stop doing anything else in my church, and it will survive. But if you stop praying in my church, it will die. So he says, this is what American pastors do. They come and visit me, and then they go back home, and they start to connect with their network of friends to see how they can make a difference. When I, many years ago, when I heard about that, this was my answer. When I didn't have the fullness of prayer for my church, I'm talking about in the early 90s, when I didn't have the fullness of prayer of what God wanted for a church, I used to say, well, it's the way the Koreans are. They're disciplined. They don't have many things going for them. Like, you know, and it's their culture, you know, they're like very subservient and they bow to everything and, and they are a serving nation and, and so by default they're happy to go and just serve. And then the Lord had a go at me, a right full go at me. And he said to me, oh, so you think that it's a culture that only certain cultures can pray like that and can have results like that? He said, if you allow that barrier to continue in your mind, then you will not receive from that ministry what I have done powerfully and why his church is a million strong plus. So we went and stayed at Prayer Mountain. And when we were at Prayer Mountain, we went there to lunchtime prayer. They ring a bell, and it's lunchtime prayer. And so we just followed those guys, and we can't understand a word they say. And on Prayer Mountain, they, they go there, and we, would, we sat there, and there's an auditorium that maybe seats three to 5,000 people, Sharon, something like that, and 80% of the auditorium is full. Lunchtime prayer. There's maybe 3,000 people there praying, and they have a f group of facilitators on the, on, the, on the podium, and they've got scriptures, and they put the scriptures up on the screen, and they put some messages up on the screen, and you've got one person reads it, reads it, and the next minute... 3,000 people begin to pray in the spirit. And then they start out, and then they read the next thing, and now the new scripture gets put on the screen. 3,000 people that pray. That's not an Asian culture. That is an ecclesia. And that is why South Korea is a prosperous nation that has survived many, many things is because the church has risen up and become significant. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Won't you stand with me, please? Once again, I want to thank you for coming to prayer tonight. Ideally, we... we uh, do not have prayer meetings that last for more than an hour and 15 minutes, ideally. So, if we were going a little bit longer tonight, it's because we came a long way to come and give you a message. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, but we will teach on some of these things tomorrow, so that when we come into Sunday church, you are already ahead of the game. And then you can help Sunday church become something that is completely different. As far as prayer is concerned. Because that's our mandate for this weekend is to teach on prayer. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Why don't you just thank the Lord for what he's done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Father, I thank you that you are birthing in this ministry, this church. You are birthing a spirit of prayer. 
You're building a house of prayer here, Father, that will stand for generations and for generations. People around the world will want to come to Fort Worth to come to this heritage of faith in, in Crowley, Texas. They will want to come here because they recognize that the Spirit of God is here. That there is a powerful legislating Spirit of God here. Thank you, Lord, that you have already begun a mighty work and you will bring it to full completion. And I pray that as your people leave tonight, Father, they are refreshed and strengthened. Refreshed and strengthened in the Spirit, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Pastor Sharon, I have so many things that we can tell you about testimonies and so many things that we can share with you, but we have purposed in our heart to limit our, our, our personal victories in favor of teaching you patterns and principles. But, but I truly tell you that this has made remarkable differences in every one of our lives. Hallelujah. Pastor Justin, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Father. Man, you received that tonight. And what, what a just a rich time. The presence of God is so sweet here. Amen. And, you know, it's still we have still tomorrow, Sunday morning, and Sunday night. Man, have you received something? You know, I, you know, just a couple of weeks ago when we had our anniversary service and, and was preparing, preparing for that, and the Lord speaking to my heart about, you know, we had fit coming out of 19 years, going into 20 years, and that's why the Lord put in my heart that we are a house of faith, we are a house of prayer, we are a place of glory, and we are a people of influence. Amen. That's who, that's who Heritage of Faith is. And this is a house of prayer. Amen. Man, man, we could stay here all night. <laughs> man, wow. We're looking forward to tomorrow morning. Now, tomorrow morning, it, it will, the sessions will start at 10, but the doors are open at 9, and we will have donuts and coffee. But hear me, we're going to stop serving donuts and coffee at about 9.40 or so, okay? And because we want you to be done eating by the time the service starts. No one wants, wants to see you chewing while, you, while, while they're preaching, okay? So, so, um, so anyway, we're, we're going to try to limit that. So you get here at 9, 9.50, you're like, well, I want a donut. Sorry, too late. You should have got here at 9, okay? Um, so anyway, that's just, uh, just, just here we can, we can just to flow here because there's, there's important things here happening. And, and some people have a tendency, they'll get up and, is there any more donuts out there? I'm not, no, you know, we don't, you don't, we don't need any distractions, right? Because, because they're here on assignment. They're not here to play church and we're here to receive assignment. Amen. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for what we've received so far, Lord, and, and I thank you that it is in our hearts, and, and I thank you, Father, that we, we, are, we are a people that are building our house upon a rock. Not just people that hear a word, but we are doers of the word. So, Father, we receive the word, and we commit to be doers of it, and this is transforming us with an explosive change in prayer. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you tomorrow morning.